In this video, I am going to talk about behaviorism, stimulus response theories without reinforcement. This theory is otherwise called as continuity theories. Constructivities and behaviorist theories belongs to school of behaviorism. They interpret learning in terms of connection or association between stimulus and response. Association theories is also known as SR theories includes the various learning theories which try to explain learning as a matter of connection established between stimuli and response. Associated theories believe learning is considered as a mechanical process being connect certain stimulus and certain response. They believe learning is nothing more than the execution of new behavior based on environmental condition. It is a result of application of the consequences. It only focuses on objectively observable behaviors. They believe learner as a passive listener, tableau as a. They e individual learn to behave through conditioning. Under these categories, we may include theories like Ivan Pavlov's classical conditioning theory, J. P. Watson's classical conditioning theory, Gertrude's continuous conditioning theory. Ivan Pavlov. A Russian psychologist, he was basically interested to know how the process of gastric segregation in dogs works. He was also awarded Nobel Prize in 1904 for his contribution in medicine, especially the digestive process. This theory of learning was accidentally discovered by him during his experiment on dogs. According to him, learning as a habit formation based on the principles of association and substitution. Pavlo developed an objective approach to learning. He believed stimulus response type of learning were in place of natural stimulus and artificial stimulus can evoke a natural response. When both stimulus brought together several times, it becomes habituated. From his experiments on conditioning, he derived the following five laws. Law of causation, law of discrimination, law of generalization, law of experimental extinction, Law of higher order conditioning. Pavlo, based on his experiment on dogs, he proved this theory. When food is put in the mouth of the dog, it salivates. The food is called unconditioned stimulus, and the salivation of the dog is called conditioned response. The unconditioned response is unlearned and impulse no precondition. In Pavlo experiment, when food was given to the dog, the sound of the bell was turned. The sound of the bell, a neutral stimulus, evoked no response of the first and the second presentation. This stimulus is called conditioned stimulus. Initially, conditioned stimulus and unconditioned stimulus was given to the dog together for a number of times. Then, unconditioned stimulus was withdrawn and only conditioned stimulus was presented. This alone evoked response and the dog secretes saliva. Thus, if conditioned stimulus alone is unsuccessful in electing response, this response, that is salivation, is called conditioned response. That is, unconditioned response food gives unconditioned response saliva. When it is bind together unconditioned stimulus with conditioned stimulus, it produces unconditioned response. After that, unconditioned response produces when the conditioned stimulus is here. Finally, conditioned stimulus produces conditioned response. Thus, classical conditioning is a process in which a neutral stimulus acquires all the properties of natural stimulus when both are replaced together for a number of times. Since natural stimulus like food is substituted by nat neutral stimulus, say sound of the bell, this theory is also called as substitution learning. This conditioning does not occur in the beginning. It takes time and repeated trials. This response to conditioned stimulus, that is sound of the bell, depends on pairing it with the unconditioned stimulus, food. J.B. Watson's Classical Conditioning Theory Watson opinion the behavior can be explained in terms of stimulus response connection in the brain. It is because continuity of the brain was 
enough to establish connection between stimulus and response. He believed learning activities are facilitated through the process of conditioning. According to him, learning is shifting of old response to new stimuli. All our behavior is learned by interacting with the internal, external environmental stimuli. To prove this, he conducted an experiment on his 11 year old son. Watson presented him a rabbit. His son Albert started loving the rabbit. He always played with it. After this, Watson produced a loud sound during his son's love making and playing with the rabbit. This sound was repeated many times. The sound was produced only at the time of playing with the rabbit. After this, the sound producing process was stopped. But the child started fearing that the rabbit even on looking at the rabbit. In the way, the response of the fear got conditioned along with the rabbit. The result of this experiment was that bear learning activities are facilitated through the process of conditioning. On the basis of his experiment, Watson concluded that when a stimulus and response occur at the same time in close collection, the connections are born between stimulus and response is strengthened. Based on it, he gave two laws, law of frequency and law of regency. E.R. Gatris Continuous Conditioning Theory Edwin R. Gatri belonged to Washington University, strong supporter of stimulus response theory without reinforcement. He explained stimulus response born with help of contiguity like Watson. He rejected the law, law of frequency given by Watson and developed a new law of prosperity. He believes that only last response in the series which was connected to the stimulus was important. In order to explain this theory, Guthrie conducted a series of experiments on cats in the puzzle boxes. Learning is an association between stimulus and response. He puts a cat in the puzzle box. There was a pole in the middle of the box. Touching the pole from any side and in any way open the door of the box. Food for the cat was also put outside the box. When the cat was kept inside the box, it was found the solution to come out immediately. After that, whenever the cat was put in the box, the cat would repeat the previous behavior all the time. By this experiment, Guthrie concluded that second movement of any organism would be based on his first one. It means that the law of continuity works here. Based on his experiment, Guthrie concluded that two three laws, law of conditioning, law of inhibitory conditioning and law of practice. Education implications of classical conditioning theories. Learning can be made easy by associating one stimulus to the others. Conditioning helps to develop good habits and eliminate the undesired behaviors and superstitions. Classical conditioning theories useful in the development of concepts symbols and formulas in the minds of the learners. This theory is used by psychotherapists in deconditioning the emotional fears and mental tensions from patients. In the classroom, the use of audiovisual aids can be made effective through conditioning. Teachers can also provide conductive learning environment to children in school for effective and permanent learning for strengthening SR. Students may consult the given reference for further studies. Thank you.